All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's 5 p.m. Central European time. Um, thank you everyone for coming. I see a lot of attendees today in today's session, a lot of familiar names who already pinged me, so that's very, very exciting to see. A lot of familiar names, um, a lot of simulation enthusiasts. All right, hello again uh, to everyone and welcome to the SimScale webinar, uh, which is about nonlinear mechanical analysis for early stage design. I'm your host and moderator for today's session, Yusuf Murad, and I'm a product marketing engineer here at SimScale. It's really, really a pleasure to host this webinar today along with my great colleague and expert in structural mechanics, namely David Short. David is an application engineer here at SimScale who will also introduce you to the platform and how to set up an electronics enclosure with a snap fitting cover using our structural analysis module. At the end of this webinar, as always, we will have some time to cover all your questions in a dedicated 10 to 15 minute Q&A session. So if you have any questions about the webinar, today's case study or SimScale in general, please put them in this little Q&A chat box that you can see, and we'll make sure to take them one by one at the end. All right, let us have a look at today's agenda. Today, we will be demonstrating the benefits of engineering simulation in the cloud and how you can use the structural module inside of SimScale to analyze the structural performance, but also assess the structural integrity of our casing snap fit assembly by having a look at, for example, the peak stress regions, investigate the likelihood of permanent deformation, um, but also breakage and ev evaluate the snapping uh, kinematics. And the design goal is to ensure safe single snap operations while minimizing material yielding. All right, although I see a lot of familiar faces um, in the attendee list, let me briefly introduce SimScale to those who are not familiar with our platform yet. So SimScale is committed to making engineering simulation more accessible, whether it's from thermal, structural, but also fluid simulations to other industries who couldn't afford simulation so far. And our goal and our mission is to introduce digital prototyping into any R&D cycle. Um, with SimScale, you can basically explore the full design space with a desired accuracy and also reduce trial and error that comes with physical prototyping. Um, to summarize all of this, basically in a three-point step is that we offer computational resources that scale up on demand. So whenever you need computational resources, you can basically um, scale up and scale down the usage of um, the machines that you are using. And we will talk about that in a few seconds in a bit more detail. We also offer streamlined simulation workflows, but also offer modern sharing and co collaboration features. And we would like on our wishes for engineers and designers to be able to simulate early, simulate more, and especially simulate now. Or to put it even more crisp, uh, which is our kind of mantra, you come with your CAD model and basically leave with a design decision. Um, let me now briefly elaborate on four key principles which make SimScale an absolute game changer, namely the on-demand power of our cloud solution, the technical and ec economical accessibility and feasibility, our world-class support, as well as our intuitive platform, which supports lean workflows. So when we talk about a simulation power I already alluded to is the on-demand power that you can basically scale up or scale down um, however many cores you need really depending on the simulation purpose, whether you have a FEA simulation or CFD simulation. You can explore your full design space. You can explore what if scenarios, so change your boundary conditions and run every simulation in parallel. And you can basically get accurate simulation insights in real time. So you run your simulation and you can basically use our integrated post processor to evaluate your design decisions. On top of that, as I already alluded to, is the economically accessibility, so you can definitely reduce operation overhead. You have always accessibility to your um, to the cloud HPC system. So you can run simulations whenever you want without the reduction of performance of your system, basically. And you can distribute team and remote, uh, remote work, basically, um, whenever you want. Also, we are very proud of our support team. So whenever you run into trouble with your simulation, our support team is here um, to help you. We offer things such as um, simulation templates that you can use, which you can basically copy into your own dashboard and see how our experts have set up the simulation and then can get started with um, setting up your own simulation and change the boundary conditions and so on and so forth. Last but not least, um, let's talk about the intuitive interaction and also lean workflows. Um, Basically, you build simulations very, very quickly. And as I already mentioned, the first point is that you can um, evaluate your results in SimScale's integrated post-processor. And this also results in faster onboarding and training times for your teams. Um, and it can basically be adopted among engineers from all departments. So you don't have to be an expert in simulation and share your simulations um, and insights with other team members. 
And with that, I would like to now hand over to my colleague, David Short, who will introduce the case study. So thanks very much for that. Yes, my name is David, and I will be taking you through the technical part of this SimScale webinar, where we will be taking a look at um, early stage design incorporating structural analysis. So a little bit about the project before we get into it. We'll be taking a look at an electronics enclo enclosure that uses a snap fitting cover. Um, and it's really beneficial to use structural analysis as part of the design process here um, to, to optimize the actual snapping operation. Now, our results of interest that we can use to make design decisions uh, that will be output from our simulations will be the peak stress regions. Uh, this will give us an indication of where we're going to be seeing material yielding, um, the, the likelihood of actually having permanent deformation and breakage, um, as well as through animations, we'll be able to understand the, kit, the kinematics of the snapping operation itself. So I've, look, I've put a little design goal here that uh, we want to keep in mind during this session, and that is to perform trend analysis to select an appropriate snap and support design with the aim of ensuring safe single snap operation by minimizing material yielding. Now, I want to show the full um, design process incorporating SimScale. So we can we can think about this in a, a number of different environments. So in a small company where you might have your CAD engineer who is the same person as your mechanical engineer who is the same person as your structural engineer, one person doing the whole computer-aided engineering design. But we can also demonstrate this in a larger company where the mechanical engineer, which will be the, the, the main point of, of usage of SimScale in this demonstration. The mechanical engineer receives a CAD model from the CAD designer. The mechanical engineer will then um, optimize the, the part with structural analysis before then um, either submitting that design to the CAE experts, so to the structural analysis experts um, to perform some validation type exercises, or maybe they might skip that step and, and, and push straight to prototyping because maybe it's a fairly low value part. Uh, so I want to kind of show um, the, the full um, design process using SimScale. And, uh, and so that could be either applied to a small company or a much larger company. So in terms of the process that we use at SimScale, as, as goes for all of our simulations, we need to be uploading a geometry first, so a 3D solid body CAD geometry, then creating a simulation model using um, automatic meshing. And in this case, we're going to ensure that the CAD is actually associated with the simulation to allow us to do um, simulation iterations nice and easily. And in terms of the physics that we'll bring into the picture, so even though this, this is a um, fairly basic model, uh, we, we need some fairly complex structural analysis. So we need nonlinear contacts um, to actually um, provide some valuable insights here. So it's a traditionally fairly complex simulation, uh, but with the SimScale workflow, we can simplify that and put that in the hands of the mechanical engineer who might not have as much FEA experience as, for example, the the CE experts um, in in the in the other departments, but we will simplify that and and uh, and use do it through a templated simulation. In terms of solving, we're going to run nonlinear static analysis, so a pseudo static analysis, and as always, that will be cloud driven, allowing us for parallel computation, um, enabling um, quick design studies. So, without further ado, let me bring SimScale into the picture. So this is SimScale, completely contained in a web browser. Um, so that brings with it a couple of massive advantages. Um, number one, it can be accessed from anywhere. Number two, it can be accessed at any time. And number three, because it's not running on any of your local hardware, it can be accessed at any scale. So you bring in a small model, it's going to compute on a smaller machine. If you have a larger model with lots of degrees of freedom, then it will run on a much larger machine. So this is the base project where I have received my CAD model from the CAD engineer, or if I'm in a small company, um, I've created the CAD model myself as well. Uh, but we'll, from this point on, we'll, we'll take the, the, the example of working in a larger organization where we've got a CAD department, we've got a mac mechanical engineering department, and we've also got a, um, a CAE team, so a simulation department. Um, so my job as the mechanical engineer is to optimize this geometry using 
structural analysis uh, before I then submit that to either the CAE team or to prototyping. So this is my original CAD geometry. Now I've got myself here a simulation template which has been either developed by SimScale or by the, the, the simulation experts within your um, organization. So all I need to do is then use my simulation template and apply it to the original design. So we can apply it to the original design here. And this is a non-linear static analysis, as we can see here. Now, what we want to do is ensure, um, as a first step, that we have physical contact, so non-linear contacts between um, the SNAP supports and the SNAPs themselves. So we can go into physical contacts, create our physical contact. And very nicely, I've got my um, topology entity sets actually defining the master and slave surfaces. OK, so I can select my master surfaces here, can select my slave surfaces under here. There you go. Apply them to the slave surfaces and thus defining our nonlinear contact. Now, the nice thing is uh, once we've done this once, we've got topology entity sets. We only need to do it once because we're going to have CAD associative um, simulation if we make any design changes. So we've got our nonlinear contact in here in place. And then we can define the materials that we're going to use for our initial simulation. So I've loaded a few different material options into the into the simulation template. So the design engineer, the mechanical engineer um, can choose from those different materials. So let's use APEC for both. So that's um, a, a pure PC um, material, uh, plastic. And, uh, and uh, then we can use both of those as our initial simulation setup. Now, in terms of actually setting up the physics of the, the structural analysis, I've got some boundary conditions already in place here, and I just need to assign those to the relevant topology entity sets. So my fixed support, I'm going to fix this surface down here. I'm going to enforce displacement of the lid itself. So with my displace um, entity set over here and then I want to enforce the symmetry conditions as well so we've got symmetry in the x direction and we've got symmetry in the y direction okay so that's that all, all there is to it um, in terms of setting up the simulation based on a simulation template um, all the other things will be taken care of by default so the meshing settings um, and the, the simulation control and things like this so for those initial simulations you can just go ahead and use the, the, the settings that have already put it, been put in place in the template. Uh, what I'll show you later on in the session is what the um, CE expert might do in terms of uh, validation uh, type exercises as well. Uh, one thing I did forget to do is actually add some result control so I can measure the insertion force. So the insertion force needs to be measured on the same um, surface that we're, we're enforcing the motion. Okay. So in terms of meshing, the simulation will be meshed with the um, with automatic mesh settings like this. This one's already meshed because I've already run this simulation so that we've got some results to look at as well. Uh, but using this template, we will see this being applied to a new design in, in a few moments as well. Uh, but this is the, the default mesh that, or the mesh settings that we're going to be using. Um, so keeping things nice and simple, solid body elements uh, with um, a good number of elements across the thickness of all the parts uh, with some extra refinement down on the contact surfaces themselves. OK, so then we can go ahead and run our simulation. OK, so we've got, we'll call it original. And we can start it up. OK, so we're running our simulation here and now we can actually have a look at that simulation already that I've already run. So that took an hour and 40 minutes to to complete and uh, we can take a look at the, the results here as well. OK, so if I post process the results, we can go in and create a quick animation to understand both the kinematics um, as well as the, the actual um, stress that we have in the model. OK, so I've got my maximum um, stress here as 68 megapascals, which is actually the yield stress of the APEC material. So we can create our animation to see how this thing then operates.
Okay, so we can start to see a pretty good amount of detail already in terms of the actual snapping kinematics that we have here and the the the, the movement of the casing as well. Let me just make sure that we put that on yield. Okay, and we can start to see then the buildup of the the stress that is above the yield stress. And um, to make that even more visible, it's quite nice to use an ISO volume here, where we go 68 as our minimum to whatever we have as our as our maximum in there as well. Bring our transparency down, and then create another animation. So then we can see the buildup of those areas that have stresses um, higher than yield stress. Now, if we jump to, to here, we can see that we've got a pretty unacceptable amount of yielding uh, going on in the material. Um, so we need to start thinking about how we can make some design changes um, or use different material selection to optimize the, the, um, the design here and minimize the chance of failure during that single snap. So we want to really make sure that you don't have yielding across the whole thickness of, of, of thin parts because uh, then we're definitely likely to see some damage. Now, we're only using linear elastic material here. So all we are doing is identifying regions of possible permanent deformation. We are What we are not doing is um, computing exactly what that permanent deformation is. That would be using nonlinear material properties, and that might be something left to the, um, the simulation expert, which we'll, we'll be introduced to in a few minutes time. So let's think about what would be our next step as part of this design process. So we want to run a few more iterations. So what I can do is go to my CAD tool, so I use Onshape, another cloud-based tool. Uh, so that means it, it integrates really nicely with SimScale. So let's think about what we can do here. So let's optimize this one just a touch, or not necessarily optimize, but come up with a new design candidate. So let's delete this face and create a fillet. So give it a sort of a, a more rounded, yeah, that looks all right a more rounded sort of filleted shape. So maybe the holding force is not gonna be amazing here and then it might snap back out or something, but let's give it a go anyway. Now, one thing I just want to make sure of is that my topology entity sets have remained in place. So I can head over here and just make sure that my slave surfaces on the, um, on the snap supports themselves actually include this new fillet surfaces as well, which it doesn't. So we've got to make sure that we have um, that last surface included, okay? And then we should be ready to go. So we keep it as our um, as our same model, but with our slight design change. And the only thing we need to make sure of is that our entity sets remain um, consistent for us, for our simulation to be associative. So I would then create a version here and call that new design. There, give it some capitals. Create that there, and then we can stay within the cloud mode in in the cloud world. Um, so if we're using Onshape and and SimScale, that means that there's no need for downloading the model from Onshape and putting it into SimScale. We can do it directly via cloud link here. So import from Onshape, so just need to find it. There's my enclosure design, and there is my new design version. Okay, so we can import that into SimScale. And then we can apply our same simulation template onto our new geometry. Okay, so our new design has come through. Okay, so now we can use our simulation template and apply it to the new design. So let's go back to geometry and just switch over to the new design. And what's great about having these entity sets already in place, it means that the, we don't have to redefine anything within our simulation. Um, so, so there's no need to, to set up the simulation again, it's associated with the CAD model. Okay, so then we can run our new simulation and call it new design for example. And what we might also want to do is try some different material 
um, selections as well as another means of optimizing the, the design. So that could be as simple as going back to the material section here. And instead of using APEC on, APEC on the lid, I might want to use a uh, reinforced plastic, um, something like Mac Rollon, uh, apply that on the lid, for example. Okay. So then start another simulation. And this is then showing you some parallel computation really in action. So we've got new design with um, Mac Rollon lid. Okay. And yeah, on and on and on you can go. So, so change your material setups, um, try out new designs. Um, and then this, this gives you a tool to actually bring sim simulation nice and simply into a design strategy. It takes a little bit of time to set up up front. So making sure that we have a CAD model that's going to be associated with our simulation. But once that's done, it allows for quick iterations um, and the ability to actually um, get as much value out of parallel computation as, as humanly possible. OK, so let's go back to the slides just for a, se a second um, to have a look at some of the, the design insights that I've got out of um, this project. So, so I've tried three different designs here. So we've got the original design that came in from um, the CAD engineer. I then ran that one, so so had a look at where do we have yielding areas, where do we have um, where do we have stress above the 60, 68 megapascal um, yield stress. Um, so we can see that with D1 uh, we have pretty significant yielding. Um, and one thing I did notice is that this support structure underneath the snap support isn't really carrying any um, stress at all. So in terms of actually manufacturability, it might be better just to remove that because it doesn't really seem to be um, providing any, any benefits structurally. So that was my D2. Um, made everything super nice and simple, removed the, the support structure, and actually we get about the same result here. So not great design work, but at least maybe we save some cost in terms of uh, manufacturing. Um, and then my final design, what I did is I um, indented the the um, the support just a touch, and also added a nice big fillet on here um, to have slightly more um, smooth snapping operation. Okay, and there I managed to see a slight reduction in the amount of yielding that we're seeing on the neck and in 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 the in the snap itself. Um, but to be honest, my, my design changes didn't have a huge impact. So then I thought, let's go with actually um, optimizing the material selection. Okay, so on the material selection side, this had a much bigger impact. So I had my APEC. Um, and then I used Mac, Macrolon for the for the lid, and I also used then a uh, nylon 46 material um, for the lid as well. And we can we can see those those different material properties here that we have here. Uh, so um, the the glass reinforced um, polycarbonate was super stiff, and that actually created uh, very very high um, stresses as well. So you see uh, much less deformation in the snap. Um, but uh, and and still a lot of stress above the the yield um, the yield stress here. So that wasn't the best material selection. Nylon 46, on the other hand, produced some really really nice results. So we um, we we managed to get limited um, yielding, and uh, and because we're only trying to trying to uh, ensure one single safe safe um, snap fit, uh, this feels like a, a pretty good design candidate to me. So we've managed to reduce the yielding areas fairly significantly um, uh, with the material selection. Okay, so what would be the next step? Then it's actually about design submission. So we've got our design D3 here um, and we've got our material selection as well. So the case is APEC and the cover is that nylon 46. Um, and we can see the, the the final sort of kinematic behavior here, um, and and the, the 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 geometry that we've got here. Now the next step would be to either send 
to design straight for prototyping or submit to the CE department for final validation analysis. And that is actually what I want to show you now. So if we go back to SimScale, this is the actual project that I ran with the three different designs. And again, using exactly the same uh, simulation template. What I now want to do is use SimScale's collaboration features to share this with the CE department. So I can share the project with one, my simulation expert, and I can say that they can either view the project, copy the project, or edit, edit the project. And this just saves a massive amount in terms of data transfer and things like this. So um, you can think of it a, a bit like uh, working on Google Sheets or something like this, where uh, you want to give people access to your, your working simulation project. Um, and in this case, I actually want to give them the ability to copy the project um, such that they, they can then perform their, their validation exercise. There is the option also to edit directly, uh, but in terms of traceability, uh, it makes more sense for the CE expert to have their own personal copy of the project where they've performed the validation exercise. So my uh, CE expert can then copy the project. We invite them in and let me just make things a little bit clearer here. And then this is my simulation experts dashboard where we can see that the enclosure snaps design study has now been shared with them. So I can open that up in the workbench. And I can then take a copy of the project for myself to perform the final validation exercise. So this is me now working as the CE expert. So we'll call this D3 validation. So now this is my project and I can make my own validation work. So I'm going to duplicate the project and we'll call this D3 validation. Okay, so I have my um, project in exactly the same format of, as what was used in the design study. I may now want to increase the complexity. Okay, so under materials, um, I may want to check really how much permanent deformation we have and use a nonlinear material um, material model. So here I can switch to an elastoplastic model and actually upload a, um, a, a fully detailed stress strain curve of the experimental testing of the material itself so that then we can really see what are going to be the absolute peak stresses as well as the amount of uh, permanent plastic deformation in the lid part to make absolutely sure that we are that we're going to have safe um, single snap operate operation for example so under here we can then upload a csv file of our experimental data and and yeah the only other thing i might uh, think about doing is running a mesh convergence study. So rather than just using the single mesh settings that we've had in uh, defined under here, we can go and create some additional meshes, uh, maybe use second order elements, um, up, increase the number of elements across the thickness um, to, to actually run some additional um, meshes and then we can simulate all of those different meshes with the with the simulation settings at the same time and check for uh, mesh independence in the results as well okay so back to the slides and I'll summarize before handing back over okay so what have we had a look at today so we've had uh, we've gone through early stage design of this this enclosure casing. Uh, we have incorporated simulation usage into that early stage design. We've tried three different um, design candidates in terms of the SNAP support. And we've also um, optimized material selection as well. We've come up with our design candidate and then submitted that to the um, simulation experts or directly to prototyping, whichever way your company wants to work. Um, that's absolutely no problem at all. Okay, so hopefully that's given you a little bit of an insight into um, a couple of the different sort of modes that SimScale can be used in and, and certainly gives some insight into, into um, the ease of use and, and the value that you can actually get out of this tool. So without further ado, I will hand back over now. Thank you very much for listening. All right, excellent, David. 
Um, next steps would be that you can reach out to us and book a demo on simscale.com or contacting us directly at sales at simscale.com and my colleagues will then reach out to you. All right, I've seen one question coming in regarding the boundary conditions and the setup of this case. So basically what you can do is define the uh, movement of the of the snap fit by uploading a CSV file or defining it by a formula, um, how you basically want to the part to move. Um, let me check other questions that you might have in the meantime. Uh, other questions are related to CFD, which is not part of this webinar right now. I've added um, David Short's email address in the chat. So if you want, feel free to reach out to him if you have any additional questions on other subjects. Um, but for this structured webinar, I think we can wrap it up. Um, if you want to watch more webinars and attend more webinars in the future, feel free to visit us at simscale.com slash webinars minus workshops um, for more upcoming webinars on CFD and FEA. And yeah, with that being said, thank you so much for attending. I wish you a nice afternoon, evening from wherever you're watching us right now. And goodbye.